Welcome to our farm. A little bit of our everyday in a not so everyday life. Hey everyone, um, we just wanted to touch base. We are away from home at the moment um, in our beautiful hotel room. Um, we came away yesterday and have just gotten home or back to the room today from a, what do you call it? Field day. A field day, field day. Talking about lambs and producing lambs and all of those. So it's been marketing. a really, marketing lambs, which was really interesting. It's been quite a good, a good day. We've learned a lot, um, but we've also, one good thing about it is that probably we've um, cemented in our own heads that we're actually doing a lot of things as far as the, you know, people in our industry go. We're, we're doing things right as far as we're concerned and yeah, so we just wanted to share a little bit about um, about that. One of the things from me, for a, from a takeaway perspective, is that um, a lot of the speakers today spend a lot of time talking about lamb as a premium product, and it is. And I think we've all seen that the prices of lamb can be through the roof for some families and maybe a bit inaccessible. And they really seem to be marketing it a lot on the global market. For me, um, what I got out of that is how come we're not marketing it into the family home as much anymore and we are as people who've been following my other page farmers wife farmers life would know that we are really a family farm and we really like budgeting and we really think meal planning is important and all those things to run a family as well as a farm so we want to really sort of look into more and more what we can do as producers and um, and a family, what we can do for you as far as making lamb more accessible to the family home and why it hasn't been kept that way. Do you reckon? Yeah, yeah. Like the, what, what that lady say is <coughs> uh, a protein source that you can feed the family during the week and entertain. On the weekend. On the weekends. Yeah. So they they were she was from MLA, yeah. which is Meat and Livestock Australia, and basically she was saying lamb is the perfect protein for that. So it's something you can entertain with. So you can think of the sort of the higher end things like loin chops and roasts and that I suppose, but it's also a family meat. Something you can eat through the week, lamb mints and sausages and chops. Four quarter four chops. Four quarter chops yeah. and shoulders. And yeah. And let's you know, we're really keen to maybe showcase what those products can do for a family, um, not just your international, you know, markets in elite restaurants with crisp white tablecloths and things like that, things that um, are out of touch for most people and especially with, um, you know, costs of living on the rise and things like that. What can we do as producers to make our product more accessible for the average family? Yeah, but, and it was interesting to see why the, the sheep market is so down at the moment and uh, what the effects of what COVID... The hangover from COVID. It's still going now. Yeah. And, and my our, my attitude was, oh, for crying out loud, get over COVID. Like, it's been two years. But mm. what they're saying is that, that in the export side of things, there are freezers chock-a-block full of land. Yeah. That when they shut down cities, there was no restaurants open. So that was a big eye opener to me. So they're waiting for this. Sort of like a backlog of already purchased well, stocks. Yeah. To clear. They have to clear it before they yeah. can buy more stuff. And the other thing that I got from it is um, they were promoting their product. Um, which is an ex excellent which, product. Yeah. The, excellent um, product. But we've come away, well, that's what, we, that's what we're doing. We're doing. So, so. for those of you to, who, to, who haven't sort of seen that, my other page, which I've spoken about just a second ago, um, we've been sheep producing now for 20 years on, on this particular farm. And Phil in particular has been really... Um, interested in developing the product as far as uh, ram selections and that go 
that produce a really good meat sheep, but also give us a product of wool at the end of that cycle as well. And so today was a really good sort of highlight that actually he's been going in the right direction now for a few years. And that comes, it's been a lot of questioning and are we doing the right thing? And is this the right product for us? And is this the right sheep? And you know, all of those normal questions that you might have when you're trying to do these things. But yeah, I think today you've come away and you know, yeah, and, and then the You're other thing the was choosing the right um, qualities in your product was uh, the speaker that um, talked about like interest rates and um, the, the effects of that, but also he believes, and there's a fair few economists that come with it, that we should get reprieve at the end of 2024. Mm. So, so hang in there. Yeah, and, and <laughs> basically there's still a couple more mm. interest rate rises, he thinks, um, when they're not sure, but then the end of 2024, they think that there'll be a few reductions. Yeah. So, so and it was interesting uh, in, in his terminology of, of how governments manipulate. Yeah. Um, how, how actually governments over history and over time and it's part of their job is to actually, um, what did he say? Sort of, sort of I don't know, for, not force you, but well, yeah. train, training you without you realising yeah, yeah. into a behaviour. So we're currently in a behaviour of um, trying to stop spending, for example. Yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah. Manipulating behaviour, yeah. yeah, I suppose. So, so it's a little freaky to hear it, and you kind of hear it on all different sort of levels. But to hear a top economist and somebody who's in those finance areas say it, then you go, okay. Um, but he also said that these top sort of times that we're in at the moment don't often go more than fifteen months. They're mm. usually between nine and fifteen months. So don't panic. We, don't panic. That will end, and it will go get better. And so just do the best that you can do to cut costs and to yeah. save, you know, do, you know. And I, and I suppose yeah. that, that's the other part of, of what we're trying to say is that um, we're hoping that we can help families cut costs with um, buying lamb direct yeah. off us. And, yeah. And, you know, so that that's part of, yeah, that's part of our plan as well. Yeah. So moving forward for us, we um, trialled, um, butchering and packaging and all of that, our own meat late last year and we were really really happy with how that went and so we've had a few hiccups sort of getting it off the ground this year just with a few machine breakdowns and things that we need to needed to have to get the sheep to the little abattoir that we found and, and want to use but that's all sorted now um, we've had some big jobs done and out of the way and we really want to push forward with that so you know, it'll be in our local area to start with, but we really want to be able to package full lambs as best that we can for you, the best quality lamb that we can have, and get it into family homes. And it, these things seem like a big investment off the bat, like a, a full lamb sounds like a lot of meat and a lot of money, but it lasts a long time. And if you're getting a good quality piece of meat, you don't have to feed as much of it to your family. So mm. one of my bugbears is you go into the supermarkets at the moment and the, the slices of, you know, the cuts of chops are so thin. Well, for a teenage boy, you'd have to give him three of those pieces just for him to make feel like he's had a meal. Where, you know, we're cutting them, you know, still as thick as what you would have gotten when we were kids. And so you don't need as much. Um, it goes a lot further and they're getting high quality product yeah, on, on the table. Um, so that's that's kind of where our future directions um, we want to go. So we'd love to hear from you guys. You know, we're all about nutrition and flavour and quality product for a good price. Um, you can't get a better product than fresh quality meat off, you know, as close to the farmer as what you can get. So um, lamb yeah, and, is... And the story behind it too, like yeah. where it's raised, what it's... Yeah. The grain that's been fed with. <clears throat> uh, we eyeball our sheep every single day. 
Because there was yeah, English um, them every day. There was basically a Chinese bloke, wasn't there, that's buying the, these people's yeah. lamb, and he said the flavour and all that sort of stuff. I can't get enough of it. Yeah, can't get enough of it. So, that, and that's what we hope that we're we're producing. Yeah, we're producing, but um, we're not looking at global markets. We're looking at we're looking at families, Local. locals, families. Um, you know, all of those sorts of things. So, anyway, that's it from us, I suppose. Um, we'll be heading home tomorrow, back to the farm, so we can show you a little bit about what we're doing. We finish shearing Monday and Tuesday up to lunchtime. And um, yeah, didn't get a lot of footage of that. But anyway, so that's us for now, I think. Yeah, thanks for watching. Um, and we really appreciate everyone who's watched our first video. It was um, amazing to kick off this channel um, as a bit of an extension of what we've been doing on our social media for, for a long time now, about six or seven years, um, we decided to start loading our bigger, longer videos and more um, explanation style videos onto, onto a channel. So yeah, thanks for everyone for following along. Um, yeah, we really appreciate it. Okay, see ya. Bye.